Hi everyone, this is Kate Warnock coming to you live from the Guidewell Insights Lounge. I'm so excited to bring you today Tom Spann. Tom, welcome to the interview. Thanks, Kate. Tom is the CEO of Accolade, and we have a few questions for you, Tom. I know that you saw several years back an opportunity to really bring a very consumer-focused fix to healthcare. Can you describe what your model is for us? Sure. What we uh, really decided we need to do is get our arms around the whole problem for the consumer. We really need to be there to answer any question they might have about any condition, about any stage of care, anything from wellness through reacting to symptoms, through complying with their doctor's treatment plan, um, and then answer any question about their benefits, their coverage, their claims, their bills, everything. Because they, people don't distinguish that. When they're like asking coverage questions or wanting to find a doctor that's in network, they're trying to get the right care, and that's what they care about. So it's all, underlying all those questions is some care need. And we find that when we're the number on the back of the insurance card, that in fact, that's a very natural behavior. It gets a lot of people, and two thirds of the time, they're calling us before they're about to enter the care system. And then if you start to deal with the entire consumer, so not only dealing with educating them and giving them the information they need, but dealing with their emotions, right? right. Uh, anxiety, stress, healthcare. When you're sick, it's a very stressful time, or your kid is sick. It's Especially if they're calling you right before they're calling you know, about to have a procedure or enter into the system, like you said. Exactly. They're certainly it's, at a very it, heightened state. And the science has proven that people make worse decisions. Their cognitive abilities are impaired, and, right. and their health is impaired when they're anxious and, and even lonely. And then you get these contextual barriers that uh, Saul Wiener, actually here at the University of Chicago, has proven drive two thirds of the waste in healthcare. It's not the biomedical error, it's the person who can't afford their meds and the doctor doesn't hear that problem and so it never gets in the medical record. The doctor prescribed a more expensive medicine because it's not being treated with the previous treatment and just made the problem worse, right? Because they don't see in the cultural issues, the time commitments, all the other barriers that keep people from doing the right thing around their health care. So this is what Accolade does. It's really an end-to-end -end sort of solution for this consumer, isn't it? Right. You want to you want to get there early and be there for the entire journey. We don't want to carve out a piece. You know, there's perfectly good post-acute care companies, but I'd much rather be starting the relationship with the woman when she first notices the lump in her breast than when she's being discharged post-surgery, right? And be there for her for that entire journey. So, it's, um, Tom, this is a very high-touch care delivery system that you've put in place. I was wondering, you know, it seems like the, the core person to this model mm -hmm. is your um, Accolade Health Assistant. Did I name that right? Yes. Accolade yeah. Health Assistant. Tell me what are the qualities that you look for in someone who's going to be filling that role and what sets them apart from <clears throat> different concierge services? Well, I think the, the key things we're looking for is actually a really smart person, a great problem solver. Mm -hmm. and you want somebody, because the, these problems get very complex, the, the barriers that have to be overcome, the clinical issues. Um, and then, but then you need somebody that cares, because in the end, our model is all about trust, right? So you've, you've got to not only hire that kind of a person who's caring and, and smart, but you then have to put them in an environment where they know that they can only do the right thing for that client every single time, that, you know, that they're earning that trust every day. Um, I think it, it creates a it needs a special kind of culture, and you also need to then surround them with the technology to make it easy to do their job. They have all the information at the fingertips. They have a complete picture of that family because healthcare is really a family household centric kind of issue, and um, they can focus on listening to the client and understanding their needs as opposed to finding the answer to the question fully with the technology. Right. right. Well, I imagine too that. <clears throat> You're, you're going to probably be incorporating data, you know, from home sensors, from wearables, that sort of thing, more deeply into your system so that your health assistants can really anticipate what the needs of, of your clients might be. Can you explain to us a little bit more how is Accolade looking to really harness data to equip that health assistant yeah. and really benefit your consumer? I mean, we feel we have to be great consumers of data, right? Voracious consumers of data. Um, because we're working with the payers, whether it's a large self-funded employer or with some of our health plan uh, blues customers, it's really important that uh, you know, we get the information from them. So we have the claims data, we know what the benefits are, um, we get utilization management data, um, but we also get tremendous data just from our inter interactions with these families. Sure, right? sure. So we get data, we've worked with body media and other wearables vendors, we can do home monitoring data. Um, you know, and I think the uh, sky's the limit in terms of where we can go with data, but it's important to have that picture because sometimes, um, while the people often tell you, I, I think 
over 50% of the conditions we identify aren't even in the claims data yet. About it. Right? So that's really So you're that's really, really discovering important. it. We're that's, discovering that's a lot fantastic. of data ourselves. Yeah. But, um, you know, what I, I guess what I really think is uh, it's still helpful to really have that good picture of the person, right? So when the mom calls, one of my favorite stories is the mom call says, you know, you guys paid my ambulance claim wrong, right? And we said, well, we're not the health plan, but we're, you called just the right place. We're here to help. How do you know the ambulance claim was paid wrong? And they said, because I take my daughter to the ER every two weeks for her asthma, and this one was paid differently than all the others. Oh, wow. And um, you obviously got a serious issue already, but right. then from the data consumption, you see mom is bipolar and off her meds, right. right? And then you know that's a real issue I've got to get to to help this daughter. And so uh, if you don't understand that whole family, you don't have the data, you are handicapped in some way. You're really peeling back the layers is what you're saying and, and really identifying root causes, you're anticipating the needs, and then it sounds like your system is enabling your 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 health assistance to, to really act and engage at the most important times. Right, yeah. right. And it's, you know, sometimes the data just isn't there. We had a call just the other week where the mom's just trying to get some at medicine for her kids, asthma medicine, just over the counter. She just, she lived on a farm, she was a cashier, and um, the nurse from Ackley, the health assistant, says, you know, so how are you doing, yeah. right? And she could tell from her answer, she wasn't necessarily doing that great. I asked her what she did, she said she was a cashier at Lowe's, and talked about being on her feet all day, and then she got to, you know, I'd like to lose a little weight. How much weight would you like to lose, 150 pounds? put it on recently yeah I have put it on just in the last two years for silence I've been really depressed oh my gosh yeah. um, and she lost a baby at 13 minutes old two years ago and so we've just identified you know a bunch of ways nothing in the claims it was one claim for an OBGYN visit for oh. an issue and, and it's just you know you never would have, nowhere in the data would have been obesity depression loneliness um, some of the barriers she identified in terms of work hours didn't allow her to get treatment for depression. Right. And so, but we can figure out that and we have something to work on and help that woman. So, so you lead me to my next question. So you're really identifying the humanity of care mm -hmm. and, and really capturing and, and asking the questions. Do you think that that is the future of health care? What's, yeah, what's your vision for where no, we're going? I, I mean, health care is our, our very personal decision. People are so different, right? We're talking about now, now about personalized medicine and precision medicine and the right. importance of that. But the precision has to be about the whole person, right? It can't just be about their genomics. It's got to be about the precision of their environment, how they grew up, their culture, their you know, financial situation. Right. All these things matter because right. all these things have been proven to be barriers that keep people from doing the right care. So we're trying to get precision around the whole thing, collect this data, learn more. But then, and then deliver in a very personalized way because in the end it's about influence, right? You've got to influence that person to do something they wouldn't have done without an athlete. And so, um, you know, we sort of build on a lot of leading influence science, but partly to be influence, influencing, it's got to be personalized. Right? Right. It's got to be to you, right? And it's even better if it's from somebody to you. And no matter how much we automate this, and I think we can automate a lot of it, um, it's still better if the foundation of it is a person-to-person -person relationship. Totally agree. I have one more question for you. Sure. So you've been an entrepreneur yourself, and you mm -hmm. have a very long career in the health industry. I was wondering, what advice would you give to an entrepreneur looking to enter the healthcare industry in today's market? Um, I, I'd actually say to focus on the payer, right? An insurance company or a large self-funded employer, because they actually have the concern and motivation to tackle the whole problem for the consumer. Right. Now, I, you know, I believe in the, the consumers are the key to unlocking the big changes in healthcare. Um, but you, I don't think you can, I think further fragmenting the consumer experience and, and working with people who aren't addressing the entire consumer experience is, is problematic, right? And so I think payers are in some of the best positions um, to, to think about the whole person, right? Because it's not, it's hard to intervene on just one condition because they often have multiple. It's hard to intervene right. yeah. uh, just, you know, after discharge. It's hard to, inter you know, and those, right. I think those fragmented it's, solutions. Those discrete visits are not going to be helping anybody. Yeah. Right. So I, I, I think focusing on a way that you can um, be a part of a broader integrated solution is, is a good direction for anybody 
thinking about starting a business in Well, wonderful, wonderful advice. Tom, I want to thank you so much for your sure. time today. I hope you enjoy the rest of the conference. I look forward to joining you soon. This is Kate Warnock. We'll be back again soon.